Hi everybody, hope you're all safe and well. So in this video, I'm gonna cook a French classic beef bourguignon. So let's get inside and let's get started. So we first take our meat, take it out of the packaging. Now I've got a bourguignon pre-cut pack. Normally I buy it on the bone. They didn't have any this time, so we're going to go with this method. So, empty in there, make sure they're all separated. And what I normally do is pour in the red wine, put a bay leaf, some thyme, cover it up, and that will go in the fridge for 24 hours. Don't have to do it that long, but it's just an overnight thing. So yeah, that will render down lovely. Yeah, red wine in. I just need to go outside, get some bay leaves off my bay tree and some thyme. We'll pop that in there, cover it up in the fridge and then uh, leave that to marinate. And uh, that'll tenderize all the meat, it'll be lovely. All right, here we go. So, let's go to the herb garden. It's not too far. What I've made here is a little herb spiral. So let's just cut some aromatics. A couple of sprigs of dough. I'm going to have a little bit of rosemary. Just to get the cobwebs off. There we go. A bit of parchment over the top, straight to the fridge. Then you need to preheat the oven for a fan, probably about 160. Right, the bacon's nice and brown, so let's get it out of there and into another, another tin. Next we need a few onions. Two onions. Now make sure you have a sharp knife when you're cutting onions. A blunt knife will make your eyes water. Now if you've got a really sharp knife, you should be okay. If not, put some swimming goggles on. <laughs> Now it's important to fry off the meat. We'll try and get some colour on this. They don't overload your pan. Just shortly I'll add just a little bit of flour just to thicken the sauce up. We'll save the liquor. They look quite big chunks at the moment, but once they go into the Dutch oven with the lid on, they'll reduce quite a lot down in size, so don't cut them too small. Now I can hear you saying, why are you not using copper to cook the dish in? Well, this one is even more special to me. This was my great nan's. Now she was from Belgium, and this has been handed down to me. It's one of my most prized possessions. So I normally always use this for these sorts of dishes. It's a beautiful item and I really do treasure it. So I thought I'd share that with you. It's never let me down yet. So we'll have that filled up soon. Now I normally bring this one up to heat on the gas hob. Gives us a bit of a head start, gets everything up to temperature before it goes into the oven. So I'll just pour in a little bit of our Red wine liquor. Now the herbs in there that was marinating the meat. So that will get going. 
So in goes the meat, in goes the bacon. Bacon first. So it's time to caramelise down the onions. So if your pan's a bit dry, a little bit of oil wouldn't hurt. And if your mouth's a little dry, a little bit of wine won't hurt either. <laughs> now you can add a stock cube or a stock pot to this, this dish. Sometimes I just use a chicken stock cube. There's enough flavours going on there, but it just boosts it a little bit and seasons it. Some water to cover the meat. Sometimes I have to check the levels of the liquid as, as it cooks, so I want it drying out. A little dash of Worcestershire sauce. Not easy to say when you've had half a glass of wine. And also caramelised onions can now go in. You can vary the quantity of onion. I like onions, so I have quite a lot. You could probably just get away with one. One onion would be more than sufficient. I'll deglaze that in a moment with some liquor out of here, and then we'll cook off the mushrooms and a little bit of garlic. Time for some seasoning. <laughs> How cute's that? Some pepper. A couple of pinches. And the same as salt. Not too much because we've got the uh, stock cube in there. So thank you, Birdie. <laughs> Check on the levels of fluid. Yep, it's okay, meat's covered. <coughs> Lid back on. It's been it's been brought up to the boil, so that can go in the oven in a moment. The oven's on about 160, so it'll go in there for about three hours. Roughly chop up some mushrooms. The quantities can vary, you know, to suit how many people you're feeding. So this will do about three to four people. So, never wash mushrooms, just brush them off or cut the pieces off. It's the tips that are dirty, you just cut them and discard it. This is a very rustic recipe. So uh, it's very forgiving, that's why I like it. You don't have to be a brilliant chef, you just have to enjoy it. It tastes nice, it makes people smile, it's good. Don't be scared to experiment with different recipes. Put your own spin on it. I did one once and I tried a curry with rhubarb. <laughs> Never lived that one down. Let's saute that down with some butter. I'm going to put some garlic in with that as well. And then onto the carrots. Right, let's pop this in the oven. Don't forget this is going to be very, very hot. oven glove or a dry tea towel, never a wet one because the heat transfers through a wet one very quickly. I've learnt that. See you soon. So we're just starting to deglaze the pan now. A little bit of liquor, a little bit of water. That's where all the flavours hiding so it pays to take your time deglaze the pan and get that back in your cooking pot. Delicious. So hopefully by the time this goes out, I would have made a bit of a recovery and I'll be getting back to what I do best, a bit of construction. Doesn't hurt to have a break and do something like this, a little bit different, so I hope you enjoy it. Try the recipe, let me know what you think. I think it's lovely. <laughs> 
Potatoes are boiling away, lovely. We'll soon drain those, get them meshed up. A little bit of seasoning, some butter. That'd be a good base for the bourguignon to sit on. Delicious. By the way, it smells delightful in the kitchen. I say so myself. There's not too much you can get wrong with this recipe, to be honest with you. Uh, whatever method or variation you use, you won't go far wrong with it. It will taste lovely. Well worth the effort. If I can do it, you can do it. Uh, yeah, that's all I can say really, just give it a go, it's, it's enjoyable, you know, you get something at the end of it, something nice to eat, better than out of a packet, and uh, enjoy the journey as well as the destination, have fun, don't be scared, get it wrong, you can still eat it, don't worry about it, so just give it a go, you might surprise yourself. I did. <laughs> right, that's looking lovely. That's reduced down lovely now. All the flavours have come off. All the stuff that was stuck to the bottom of the pan has now removed itself. So all those little nuggets on the bottom is where all the flavours hide in. And uh, that's all off now. It's gone down lovely and thick. So that will soon be put into the pot. The potatoes are boiling nicely. By the time they've cooled down, we've mashed them up with a bit of butter and a bit of seasoning. Um, yeah, it'll be a lovely dish, so just what you need. Cheer yourself up with a bit of cooking. If you're not so sure, go online. There's loads of recipes on there, probably a lot better than mine, but it doesn't matter. You can take uh, a lot of hints and good things out of all different recipes and then put your own spin on it. Same as I do in the garden. I smell nice. Right, it's been in the oven for about an hour and a half now. Yep, so that's fine. Right, I've prepared all the carrots. They're ready to go in. I'm going to fry off the mushrooms in a moment. They go in a little bit later. So let's give it a check. Uh, let's check the fluid levels. Uh, if we need to top up, you can either use water or wine if you haven't drunk it all. <laughs> I have. Uh, so yeah, we use a little bit of water. Uh, yeah, so let's just have a look and see what's happening. Yeah, it's looking good. Lovely. Right. Let's add carrots. garlic's in there as well. I've just literally cut half a clove or a bowl of garlic in half. Be nice and mellow that way. We can take it out after if you don't like too much garlic. I love garlic so I'll probably eat that to myself. So let's get that lovely reduced glaze in there. Top it up with a little bit of water. I think that'll be absolutely fine. Yeah, the pan's lovely and deglazed. Nothing stuck on there. All those flavours, in you go. Really worthwhile. A little bit more water. The carrots don't have to be covered with water. That's great ready to go back in the oven. Right, I'm just going to test to see whether the boiled potatoes are ready for the masher. I'll do that with a fork. Simply place it in there. If they slide off the fork pretty easy, they're ready. So yes, they've slid off, they've passed the test. They're ready to be drained, mashed, butter, salt, pepper, and they'll await for the arrival of the bourguignon. Thank you. 
And last but not least, I'm just about to fry off the mushrooms. I'm going to put some butter in there. The pan's been deglazed, so it's nice and clean. I um, always find that mushrooms are best cooked in butter. This is not one for uh, someone that's on a tire. So uh, yeah, we're going to get those fried off and they're the last to go in the pot. Um, that probably need probably about another half an hour once they're in the pot. So yeah, we're getting close to the finish line now. So mm, I'm getting hungry. Just get them all covered in butter. Lovely and creamy. A bit of seasoning. Ready for the beef bourguignon. Time to put those delicious sauteed mushrooms in. 15 to 30 minutes maybe, more cooking. I don't think this one will last that long, but they'll be ready soon, so pop that back in the oven. So that's looking okay. So if you like your sauce a little bit thicker, just leave the lid off and reduce it down a little bit. Um, but it's a matter of taste really. So the meat's just starting to be nice and tender, low and slow. Yeah, if you want to thicken it up, a little bit of maybe cornstarch, gravy granules or flour. It's a personal preference. Right, let's get this to the table and serve it up. Seasoning. Mustard is optional. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, you're not going to see me eat it because it would be like feeding time at the zoo. <laughs> Give the recipe a try. No further ado, I'm going to tuck in. Excuse me. So thanks for watching. Give it a go. There ain't no hard and fast rules with it. Just have fun with it. Let us know how you get on if you do do it. Just uh, leave your comments. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed, you're new to the channel. By the way, I'm not a trained chef as you've worked out. But uh, hit the bell button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.